from my heart and from my hand why don't people understand my intention Good morning guys welcome back to the channel so I think where you left me last I was just starting to do work on the uh, vibration layer and also the acoustics thermal layers as you can see those are done now added some on the rear panels there didn't add anything to the floor because the OEM vibration layer was still in great condition I've just added the acoustics layer on top and this is a six millimeter dyna liner also started to bolt on some of the uh, easier items like the top dash pad because obviously it's always easier to put the top dash pad in first before you actually do the front windscreen but before you can do the front windscreen you also have to do the roof liner as you can see here I've already added the acoustics layer again that's got thermal properties and I will put the uh, liner in shortly so yeah now we're going to focus on some of the easier bits that need to be bolted in like the uh, brakes and also start to put the lights in so uh, yeah here's a little montage of the lights going in doesn't look like I'm going to be able to put the front indicators in just yet because I managed to order the wrong gasket so uh, let's continue with doing the handbrake hi guys I just want to stop the video there for a moment and let you know that any um, donations or ad revenue generated by this channel is actually being given towards cancer counseling charities that are helping families that have received a cancer diagnosis get through difficult times. So any help from your side, donations, or just watch the video to the end uh, is highly appreciated. And uh, you know, from my side, thank you so much for the support so far. the front of the handbrake connected up just need to uh, sort out final adjustments on the rear but I'll do that once I've sorted out the hydraulics as well so now I need to focus on uh, the pedal box because with this being an electric vehicle uh, obviously we have one pedal too many so we need to find a way to either remove that or modify this in a way that it would be safe to pass its test so let's get this cleaned up and look at what we can do to make this more suitable. So a better solution to this problem would obviously be to have an automatic car pedal box, but uh, parts for automatics are very difficult to come by. So I'm gonna have to modify this one that's got a clutch on. Now, you can see here, both of these pedals are reliant on each other for spacing on this shaft. And one spring is being balanced against the other. So in order to keep the return spring working i need to just basically cut off the long clutch pedal arm round it off and make it safe so uh, yeah let's take this apart and uh, start that process yeah so you can see you need to keep this spring in place in order for the brake pedal to return the clutch pedal we need to keep this uh, cylinder here with the brush brass um, bearing inside so we're just gonna cut this off here and here and then reassemble it and that should make it uh, safe for the test
Okay, so now we've took the clutch pedal off, we can round this off, give it a coat of paint and reassemble and uh, fit it to the car. Okay, that modification worked quite nicely. As you can see, I've still retained the spring back in the pedal arm. Obviously no change with the accelerator because it still needs to connect to the uh, electronics at the front, but that worked quite nicely. Just need to put the two bulkhead bolts in and uh, that is in place, which means we can now focus on this end of things. So obviously your brake cylinder is going to remain the same. I've put the blanking plate on because there's no pass through required for anything like a clutch or a heater hose. Uh, so yeah, uh, another note actually is, you can see what we did here with the firewall. The OEM firewall comes with a bunch of cutouts and holes in it, which I didn't like, uh, because obviously we don't need the pass-through uh, for heater hoses, etc, etc, or even mounting the fuse box in the dedicated place. We can mount the fuse box wherever we want to. Uh, so I used some 10 millimeter Dyna liner which is oil and water resistant, as well as offering acoustics uh, properties as well. So I think that's gonna work quite nicely on the bulkhead. And in order to get these molded shapes, I just used a heat gun to shrink this down. So yeah, now we can focus on uh, brakes. Okay, let's get the brake cylinder and the valve in place, and then we can focus on making some Brake lines. So hopefully you guys can see this, but I'm using a single flare. I'm just going to put everything in finger tight at the moment because I did construct these on the bench. So maybe there's some final adjustment to make. Okay guys, that's that mocked up. And again, this is just a dry mock up at the moment. We'll do the bleeding, etc. later when I'm happy with all the clearances, but for the moment, I think that's okay. So now we can focus on the next piece, which staying with the bulkhead is going to be the washer. Okay, let's start with the washer motor. In the end, I ended up purchasing a, a new one because the old one was only a single speed and I wanted two speed. Just a little bit of bling as we've got quite a few blue accessories. Okay guys, after a bit of uh, wiggling, finally got that in place, which means we are complete on the bulkhead side. Now we can focus on the headliner. So let me just show you why you should always start in the rear of a Clubman. Because in the roof you have these little tabs that go against these arch bars that you can actually lock against and then pull forward to get the tension that you need. Makes it a little easier. Okay guys, I've run out of time today, so that's it for this week. Uh, we'll get this glued in place in the next couple of days once the workshop is warmed up a bit and we've got a little bit more give uh, in the fabric. But uh, yeah, for the moment, thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe and we'll see you soon. Bye bye.